Among the many topics on the table at the meeting underway on the IMF and World Bank is that of the increasingly vital role of cities. In its 10th annual Global Monitoring Report, the World Bank argues that developing countries need to harness the power of urban centers to achieve the UN's Millennium Development Goals. Those are a set of eight ambitious objectives covering areas such as poverty, education, and child mortality. Joseph Rebeck is the World Bank's lead economist for the Development Prospects Group. He leads the work on this report and joins us now. Talk to me a little bit about the, uh, the rural-urban divide. How dramatic is it and, and what kind of impact does it have? It's, it's, it's quite uh, large, uh, Walter. I mean, the poverty numbers, for example, in, uh, for the rural population globally stand at around close to 30%, while the urban population only around 11, 11.5% is poor. So this is quite a large disparity. The same is also true for, uh, for some of the service delivery issues that we look at in the report. Like, for example, access to uh, sanitation. Uh, in urban areas, this is around 80% glow in the developing world. While in the urban areas, uh, uh, sorry, in, yeah, in the urban areas, it's around 80% globally. While in the rural areas, it's only 50%. Sanitation, safe water, you get into that, and, and I guess this uh, also has a great deal to do with mortality. I mean, you know, just having access to that can make a huge difference. Exactly. I mean, if, access, if you have close access to a health clinic in an, in an urban center, then obviously uh, uh, health care is much easier uh, to attain. Well, if you are in a rural areas and you have to travel quite a lot, then it's much more difficult to get your kids uh, to a health clinic. There's a flip side of it, though, isn't there? I mean, here in the United States, there's so much complaint about urban sprawl. I mean, where it just explodes, and yeah, urbanization needs to be handled in, in, in a correct manner as well, correct? Yeah, exactly the right point uh, you make here, Walter. I mean, urbanization can be a force for the good, but only if it's managed well. If it's managed poorly, then we see a rising, a slums arising around the world. Currently, actually, uh, close to one mil billion people live in slums, and that's quite a large number of people. So if you manage urbanization better by better planning and better connecting and better financing of it, then we can do much better uh, with respect to service delivery and making really urbanization and cities a force for the good, not only for better jobs, but also for better delivery of services like the MDGs. You talk about slums, and I guess uh, this gets to the heart of things, that uh, the, these urban areas are magnets, though. People move into them. There isn't a place for them. Uh, they, they come with these dreams, and then they end up in these uh, squalid conditions in many cases. Well, what's very important, of course, is to realize that urbanization doesn't just happen because population grows in urban areas. People actually migrate. I mean, we all, if we see a better job opportunity, we migrate. Yeah, we see a better job opportunity in San Francisco, we move to San Francisco. We call that domestic migration. This is also happening very much in the developing world. We see that urban growth, urban population growth, uh, comes for more than 40% globally from people migrating from rural areas to urban areas. While actually in some areas of the world, like China, in the 90s and 80s, it was close to 80% of urban growth was because of people migrating from the rural areas to the urban areas. That creates some tensions and problems, in, and uh, some of these areas, it almost it gets to a breaking point. How do you handle it? Well, one of the things, of course, is we should realize is, are people moving for, for a better job, or are people feeling that they're being pushed out of the rural areas because they don't have good access for their children to education, or like we discussed a bit earlier, they have no access or difficult access to health clinics. So what we want to make sure is that people in rural areas have good access to health, have good access to education, so they don't feel that they're being pushed to the cities for those type of services. We want people to move because we see also, of course, that urban areas, because of density, economies of scale, can deliver goods and services much cheaper than if it's much more spread out in the rural areas. So we want people to move, but we want people to move for the right reason. And that is when jobs are available in the cities and in urban areas. So there's, in the one hand, a growth agenda that we would need to make sure that the jobs are being created and businesses can flourish in the cities. But at the same time, of course, we need to be ready when people are moving. We need to expect that people are moving, and we should not try to hinder it. And you need to extend the tentacles out to the rural communities, too, these, these lifeblood uh, instruments that we're talking about, uh, quality water, sanitation. But it's easier said than done, correct? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean. Uh, what we also very much see, of course, is that uh, equipping people with human capital, which is portable, no? which if you get it in the rural areas, you can actually take it to the cities if you're looking for a job. But it's also very difficult if we these network utilities, as water and sanitation, which often come to areas in a, in a piped form. So we have to make 
major large investments to get them there. Again, economies of skills are there for these type of services in the cities, but not necessarily in the rural areas. They're much more costly there. Difficult, but uh, worthy issues to tackle. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us tonight. Certainly appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Robert.